Hello, hello. Hey. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, uh, you're a bit muffly though. Can you try talking a little bit? Hold on, how about now? Yeah, yeah, you're much clearer. Okay, cool. Sweet. All right. Uh, I just want to let you know I am not streaming, but I am recording this, and uh, it's both for giving you a video log of the entire thing, so you can rewatch it, because there will be a lot of information to go over, especially with the things that you suggested, like um, in-depth build decision making and things like that. I think it'd just be a lot better for you to have that in video rather than writing it all down. Um, and I may or may not upload it to YouTube if you're okay with that, of course. I'm perfectly fine with that. Okay, sweet. All right, let's get started with the session. Um, I'm going to stream my screen real quick. Let me see. Is this all good with you? Can you see everything? It's loading, but I'm sure it all looks good. Looks good? Okay, sweet. Let's get into it. Okay, <clears throat> taking a look at your OPGG, um, we can see you're on a bit of a negative win rate with Ezreal and just overall in general, but that's not that big of a deal, especially when you don't have that many games played. Of course, there is uh, a negative trend but again you don't need to focus too much on that the bigger things that i would like to focus on other than the win rate is you definitely have a high average death for playing ezreal which obviously shouldn't be the case because he's a lot safer than ad carry um and a lower cs per minute uh this is honestly a, even a bit lower than i would expect around here so we're definitely going to take a look at where you're missing cs and why you are dying i think these are the two most important things to take a look at that i can see from your opgg here um, is, is there any reason particularly that you feel that that is the case? Yes. So really quick, um, I've been playing support for forever, right? For many, many seasons, I've been sort of a support main, um, which I like, but I'm trying to switch it up. I played a little bit of mid and I am definitely struggling to see us. That's a really hard for me right now. Okay. Mostly just because not something I've spent a lot of time focusing on, right? Um, you can just kind of go ham as a support, like, yeah, hey, I'm just going to trade and, and do this and that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. um, but but so wave management and CSing in general has been tricky. And I, I actually find on Ezreal in particular, I, I don't know, I don't know if it's his clicking or what it is, but I'm I'm just I am actually just really struggling with it, right? So I often feel like I'm just slightly off with damage. You know what okay. I mean? My calculations, and yeah. I'm I'm just sort of missing it at the exact wrong time. Sure. Okay, I mean, we'll definitely go into taking a look at that. That is absolutely above and beyond, even outside of Ezreal specific, the most important thing for uh, being able to carry and have agency as an AD carry is making sure that you have income. That's the most important thing. So we'll definitely take a look at that in a lot of detail. Okay, so now we'll get into the meat of your first point um, that you would like to focus on, and that is build decision making and when and why to switch your builds. Okay, so they, there are three predominant builds on Ezreal in the meta right now. Um, you said you kind of already know them, but I'll just go over them contextually so it's a lot easier to explain why you should go which one. There is the Trinity Force Muramana build, which is the reliable, tanky, general standard Ezreal that most players opt in for because it is, well, just the most box standard Ezreal build. There is then the Essence Reaver Mana Moon Navori build, um, and that is more for having high, high burst damage and a bit of DPS with a Navori passive, but mainly for building into squishies. Um, and then there is the final build, which is more of a, when you're a bit more experienced on Ezreal and you kind of know his limits and what you can get away with and you want to play aggressive in lane, it's where you skip Mana Moon completely and go Essence Reaver Navori. That's where you don't go Mana Moon and you just shit on lane and play as Ag aggro as you can i would highly recommend for you as you're still learning there's still so many different layers of the game to learn that learning his damage thresholds and when to be aggressive that shouldn't be your main focus right now so i'm only going to focus on the two first builds for you okay so okay. the decision making or the drafts that you want to see when you are going trinity force is when they have primarily slightly bruiser slightly tanky and most importantly more melee champions than ranged because what that allows for you to do is get more auto attacks in between your queues stack up conqueror stack up the trinity passive and play longer fights because you don't really get longer fights when you're playing against ranged squishy champions right you only hit them like once or twice and then they'll back out so mm -hmm. that's what you want to recognize when they have more melees when they have more tanky champions so if we take a look at some of these games here um, as you can see, let me see one that I can see a clear one. Okay, so for example, here they have three melee champions, 
realistically, they're pretty tanky as well. Uh, they only have two squishies. So your primary focus, you're going to end up hitting these champions more than you are these, right? Um, so in a game like this, it's quite clearly the case that you would want to go Essence Rebo over... I mean, sorry, Trinity Force over Essence Rebo. Don't want to fuck Trinity that up. Force, yeah. <laughs> Almost fucked yeah. that one up completely <laughs> exactly. for you, man. Yeah, it's just turned the whole thing around there. But yeah, um, you would want to go Trinity Force in this game, okay? Um, so, yeah, so I mean, in essence, you know, like, Trinity Force is the tank buster of the of the two builds, right? It's, I mean, it's essentially... Not, I wouldn't say it's not it's necessarily the tank buster, because the Essence Rebo build actually scales to have more dps at the end of the build it's just so that um in the mid game when you get your trinity force more mana when you stack up the conqueror i'll go into the runes of course in a bit and you stack up the trinity force, pa force passive you generally get about i think at level 12 to 13 the exact number for the amount of stats you get is plus 43 ad at level 12 just for, for free you know for fighting um and when you get to play long fights because they're melee, because they're tanky, that is a lot of fucking stats that you don't want to miss out on when you're going the Essence Reaver um, mana movement build. So again, if I were Yeah, to... and I think... I... Sorry, yeah, go on. No, I was just going to say, I think w what you're about to get to is where I start to get confused, because I sort of know that Essence Reaver is better against Squishies, but the Conqueror and the Rune Choices, like the interweave between those and how yeah, yeah. that... Um, well, that actually informs how I want to fight the actual like mid game fights mm -hmm. is where I'm I'm really struggling right mm -hmm. and and also the third item choice fourth item choice I know you know I don't often get there but I definitely feel lost on those as well yeah no like, do, uh, like am I going armor pen or some of the other things like I will uh, I will clarify that all for you but I just wanted to summarize okay, it great. in one sentence so that you can just like, I don't know go back to this in a timestamp or just really easy to keep in mind so you don't have to think about too many things because it can get confusing when you're like oh they have this many squishies and this champion is like melee and range blah 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 all you want to keep in mind is if they are generally more melee than ranged and they have to come into you that is when you want to go Trinity Force that's literally all you really have okay. to think about um and that that, that is, is it that, so what, what, would that also be like if let's say um their lineup something like a leblanc or a talon or somebody who might mm -hmm. like be initiating on me very aggressively would that also be the case or when you when you say that is it strictly when they're sort of tankier bruiser types well remember it, it, it it's most importantly the overall draft it's there's an individual champion that doesn't interact with you very well that's more of just it being an issue for Ezreal as a champion itself uh, and your build isn't really going to remedy that for you what generally you would do in that case is let's say they have a bunch of bruises and then there's a LeBlanc you would go your standard trinity mana moon build and then you would flex uh, more of Malmortius later on um, that is generally how you deal with it but Again, you don't want to confuse yourself too much because the actual difference between these builds isn't super massive. I mean, if you are wanting to min-max everything perfectly for every game, then yes, you absolutely would make a clear choice one over the other. But again, the, mm. it's it's more just of a generalized understanding for you to realize if they are tank slightly more tankier, if there's more melee champions that have to come to you, that is when you get value from yeah. playing long fights with Trinity Force. Okay? And... This is really, really convenient for you because with the Trinity Force build, you never, ever have to change your runes. There is basically one rune set. You always go with Trinity Force. So fortunately, you don't have to think about much in that regard. Um, and it is... I can't actually see you've got it here. So I will just show you on mine if I have even been playing Trinity Force recently. Oh, yeah, I did my last game. Okay. So the runes you always, always, every single game go with Trinity Force is this page here. Okay. Um, this is the only thing that can change cut down or coup de gras and uh generally you would be going cut down because you're going to be playing into tankier champs when you go trinity force right so just think about this is the only thing you change but other than that you're going to go conqueror presence of mind bloodline one of these two and then mana flow and transcendence just expand on why conqueror versus yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm about to don't worry don't worry the you. other room okay great i'm a, yeah. I'm, a I'm a very detailed man all right you don't have to, don't have to worry about that too much <laughs> yes. um so the reason you go conqueror with this uh with trinity force is because the scaling remember what i was mentioning long fights into melee champions mm. it they both synergize perfectly for that win condition when you're playing fights because if you play a long fight and keep this stacked to uh, 12 stacks and then this max stacked at five as i told you you get about 4380 that's a whole bf sword just sitting in your inventory at level 12 and that is why it is synergistically 
just the best option you can take okay if you wanted to get hyper hyper specific then there is one instance that you could change your conqueror to press the attack but still go trinity force and that is only when you absolutely want to win your bot lane 2v2 matchup and examples that i can give you in that case would be let's say you have a nautilus and they have two really squishy champions you don't really want to go conqueror because those like fights you have in bot lane are going to be very quick it's going to be on a nautilus hook and you, they either get one shot and die or they get out and then recall you know and in those cases and those cases only yeah. you can switch that to press the attack so let me see if i can find an example um of you getting really quick i'm sorry i keep interrupting you but right, you're, you're, you're making me think about things so is the opposite true where if you're going um since reaver you would want to almost always go with press the attack yes correct correct okay. so i will i will go into that build but yeah okay that makes that easy at least yeah, yeah, yeah. Like absolutely it's, it's super like, simple I, okay yeah okay i mean if you watch literally all of my AMs here um essence river pta essence river pta essence river pta essence river pta, PTA right sorry let me switch it to Ezreal. okay um and then any games i go trinity so trinity conqueror trinity conqueror trinity conqueror trinity conqueror so, so that's what i'm saying so the runes are actually quite simple it's really nice to be broken down cool. in that regard again the only other way that you would flex it um as you see as a true pta the only other option where you could flex here is trinity force um and that is again if you absolutely want to shit stomp your lane and you have a liana or a nautilus or really aggressive support that's when you can go pta with the trinity force build um okay the more you do play around with this you'll kind of figure that window out when you think it's more suitable for your game so do keep testing but the 99 percent of games as you can see that i do myself don't worry about the amount of losses this is me streaming of course um is conqueror sorcery with trinity force and then pta with that's true okay now let me yeah go i'm just gonna keep it standard my suspicion is i have bigger problems than, than well yeah that i i, I, I these, my, these minor my heritage yeah exactly I, I i always tell this like i see a lot of people in my discord they're like min maxing the perfect thing like oh what could i have cooked in this game i'm like i guarantee you it was probably your gameplay that is like yeah i'm 99 more you know what i mean like yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah exactly I, I definitely don't think that yeah this is not why i'm losing but yeah but yeah. just for clarification to make it more holistic and finish the other build of yeah. course is the essence river mana moon navori build which is um mm -hmm. the second option of course and that you would build when they are basically majority squishy champions okay i'll give you three criteria for this one if they are majority squishy champions two if they outrange you um or three if you just can't auto attack in that game so examples for the third yeah. would be like a leblanc she doesn't necessarily outrange you, but she's so like tricksy, you know. I mean, you don't get to hit her consistently. It's like you hit her once or twice, and then she'll peace out. Or like an Akali, you know, she's melee. But you don't really get to hit her consistently because, again, she has a shroud. She's gonna be jumping all over the place. So again, if they are all squishy, if they outrange you, or if you can't really auto attack, that is when you will go with the S three the Mana Moon Navori build. Um, and going into the runes for this, it would be press the attack, uh, presence of mind, bloodline more often than not you're going to go coup de gras because as i said they're most likely to be squishy right so you don't get any value from cut down yeah, um, and you don't need this anymore you don't need mana flow transcendence because essence reaver gives you infinite mana and generally in the essence reaver build and with navori you have infinite haste anyway so you don't need the haste from this mm -hmm. so what i like to take instead is recognizing that the essence reaver build is all about pure raw damage i go absolute focus and gathering storm so i just have infinite ad you know what i mean so all of my abilities hit really really yeah. hard um but there is a caveat to this i basically go this every single game if you look at my room page here um sorcery 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 every single game i go sorcery so you don't have to change it but if you wanted to you realistically can go any secondary page you possibly want with the essence tree build because you don't you don't absolutely need this so you could go resolve if you are scared about them having a nautilus draven or something and go like bone plating or you could go uh, i don't know taste of blood and ultimate hunter for fun you know basically you can go anything if you really wanted cookies and boots because you're running out of mana in lane you could do that too you could do that too so keep that in mind I but just recently switched off of co cookies and boots because mm -hmm. i i um but i will say this i feel like it's a crutch Mm -hmm. um, it, it is yeah like it the is. cookies feel great in lane and but I, there have been a few times where i was annoyed i couldn't buy boots mm -hmm. i wanted them and um 
I overall don't. I think it's a worse play style, even though it feels good in lane sometimes. Yeah, the theory behind why I teach most Ezreals to not go cookies, even though it's the predominant rune that pro players take, because they just don't think, they just go what's most commonly used, is because cookies is a remedy for bad laning. If you play the lane oh. well on Ezreal, you don't need the three cookies. A lot of the time, you'll even if you're not playing perfectly, you'll find yourself just sitting on three cookies anyway and be like, well, what was the point in this rune? And then it's just giving you nothing, essentially. So the Boots rune is very, very good, though. Um, it's just a free kill, essentially. You get 300 gold for free. Um, so, yeah. But generally, you wouldn't want to go Inspiration because why would you want three cookies when you could have, like, 20 AD for free in the mid game? You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, yeah, there you go. Exactly. That is the full holistic work down of what builds work and when to go them um if you wanted to know about the essence navori build which i am building very commonly now it is basically just when build i've definitely tried it but um i, I feel like if you don't get ahead it's it's not yeah a, like exactly it, it's it's yeah. a complete <laughs> it feels really bad mid game if you're behind yeah yeah, yeah. It, it does it's a complete feast or famine like i am going to you like full confidence i'm going to shit stomp this lane and there's no other way about it kind of build you know and when you really feel that confidence and you're like okay i have ezreal nautilus and they're squishy and i'm just gonna farm them that's when you should go this build and it is like the most dps you can possibly get if you're playing from ahead if you fall behind, you become a fucking cannon minion. Um, and the runes are exactly do, the same. I do want to ask about this Bloodthirster I've seen you build a few times, mm -hmm. right? So, like, wh why, like, when do you think that's inappropriate? Like, I love building the item. I think it feels great whenever mm -hmm. I build it. Um, but I'm not, I don't see a lot of people building it. So, like, mm -hmm. when is it appropriate to build, like, steel in, in, in any form, really? So, generally, the only reason I am allowed to go Bloodthirster in this build is because I don't need to go Mana Moon. Because if you were going the Essence Mana Moon Navori build, then at that point, you really want some armor pen, right? You want a Cerildos, you want an LDR, because they're going to be quite tanky by the time that you get your fourth item. So, in that case, it would only be your fifth and final item that you would build a Bloodthirster, right? Um, but with yeah. this build, obviously, because you skip it, I can get it a lot quicker. And in this game, you know, obviously, I'm mm -hmm. fed out my asshole, so I didn't really didn't matter what yeah, I'm, I'm gonna ignore that <laughs> yeah. like, I, I don't think i should be skipping that <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly so, exactly uh... but if you did okay. want to know when you should be opting into lifesteal in general because in the trinity force build the way that you would get lifesteal is through hydra ravenous hydra instead of blood duster it is just if they have a lot of poke if they have a lot of poke and they start chunking you down before you can get into the fight realistically um that is when you would want to build some form of lifesteal even a single bam scepter can help okay. so that um you can sustain yourself before the fights like fully break out so you're not just one hp okay so now you wanted to know about the auxiliary items the last items beyond the core items the core items being mm. trinity mana moon or essence river mana moon navori all you want to think about in the trinity force build it's very very self-explanatory if there's no complexity to this it's just if you don't know you don't know right um and basically on your third item for the trinity force build you almost always want to be building Cyrilda because stylistically, when you're building Trinity Force, they are more tanky champs, right? And so by that point, they're going to have a bit of armor, they're going to have a bit more health, and you're going to want that pen and the slow being very good into melee champs against them, okay? But let's say if for some reason they had no armor at all, then you don't want to go Cyrilda and you want to recognize the next thought process is how can the enemies kill me? So if you don't need, so step one is, do I need pen? If no, okay, step two, can they kill me and how can they kill me? And if they have a LeBlanc, if they have a Zed, if they have two AD Assassins or two AP Assassins, you want to recognize that. If they have AP Assassins, you want to build more. If they have AD Assassins, you want to build Frozen Heart. Okay? And that's only if you don't need pen. Okay? okay. And that's, that's about it. After that, you can build whatever the fuck you want. Um, just make sure. So, you... And this is probably a stupid question, but mm -hmm. why Cyrildas versus uh, Lord Dominic? Well, the point is that you can build Lord Doms if you want, but with the Trinity Force build, the way Lord Doms is work, you need to have a health differ differential between the target that you're hitting. And Trinity Force gives you a decent amount of health, and it is quite hard to hit the threshold that makes LDR incredibly valuable because you're more tanky, right? They need to have a I just assume since they were more tanky, like I'm building this into tanks, like that almost feels like Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'll trust you because I'm sure you've done the math. Like yeah. I don't know. But Sty yeah, stylistically, yeah. you would think like by when you say it out loud, oh, I want to build a tank killing item. 
because I play against tanks, then surely LDR would be better. But if you actually look at the maths involved in the items, I'm not going to go into specific breakdowns because it's not always that important, of course. It's just that the actual break point that you need for them to have more health than you is fucking high. And when you build Trinity Force, that differential in health is like much, much slimmer. So the bonus damage you get from LDR is much, much lower. And generally... that That's... Sorry, Kev. No, no, I was, that's, that's actually really helpful because I, I've been sort of like thinking about this a lot and maybe I'm just overthinking it. Like if it's just, hey, it's Cyril mm -hmm. is, is probably going to be the better choice 99% mm -hmm. of the time, I'll just stop even yeah, I mean, considering no. LDR. And most of these yeah, 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 no, no, yeah. no, no. With the Trinity Force build, you should never really consider LDR. Um, never okay. really. The only, this one tiny caveat, and that is like, if they have Mundo, Cho'Gath, Malphite on the team or something, you know, that's their fucking draft, then yes, you can go LDR because they're going to have infinite hp and you're going to need that fucking cut down passive you know what i mean but or giant slayer passive sorry it's what it's called but other than that like legit 99 percent of the games you're going to want serelda because what you need in this build as well is you actually need the haste on your third item because you don't get that much haste with these two items of transcendence you get around about 69 or 72 i can't remember which isn't quite enough in the mid late game compared to the essence Reaver build you get a lot of haste in that build so you really want this from serelda as well so Basically, you don't need to think about it too much. Just know if they have literal the Avengers level of HP on the enemy team, yeah, that's yeah. the only time that you need to go uh, LDR. Um, whereas with yeah, the Essence okay. the Navori build, then LDR is very, very useful because it gives you crit, which gives more damage than the Navori build. Um, sorry, with the Navori passive. Remember, at that point, you're playing against squishies anyway, right? Because you're building Essence Trooper. So, you know ldr isn't that valuable then either so it's very rare that you get games that you need ldr is what i will say um this is a lot simpler than i was expecting so that's great that makes yeah, it easy to put in the trust place. me it, yeah. it is super simple i just thought i'd record it so that in case you ever do get confused you can just come back and watch this again you know so, no it's, it's fantastic i appreciate it yeah. um okay let me take a look if that's everything runes items i am choices when to go what yeah that is pretty much everything okay um yeah so lifestyle into poke Serelda's third. If they have no armor, then go more or frozen heart, depending on what defensive option you need. If you do go more frozen heart, third item, then you absolutely want Serelda's on fourth item because then base armor gets very, very high. So you want Serelda's then. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. It's a lot simple, simpler than people realize. And the most important thing I want to tell you about all of these builds above and beyond is 99% of the time, the thing that is making you lose the games is not your build anyway in the game. It's not It's not your build in the yeah. game. Yeah. It is some gameplay aspect. And if you stylistically find that you enjoy one build over the other, I get this with a lot of my students. Is they're like, oh, I know I should flex my builds, but I just really like how Trinity Force feels like, or vice versa. You can one trick a particular build and it will still be fine to go that build every single game if you really wanted to. It's just not min-max perfectly, you know what I mean? So if you come to find, I really like Trinity Force, can I just build this every game? You can. You absolutely can do that if you want. You absolutely can do that if you want. Yeah. But again, yeah. So you're saying I should go Eclipse every game? <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. If you really like Everfrost <laughs> fucking Ezreal because you like setting up your ulti with the CC, then all power to you, man. Then anyway. No, yeah, okay. I appreciate that. That That's helpful, though. Yeah. So I, I actually do, because I've tried both of those builds you've talked about, I mean, in general, and I think mm -hmm. while I do like Essence, um, where I'm at um, mechanically, it's really easy for me to just... Yeah, just die. ...aim off of that, and so it's just not worth it, right? Mm -hmm. I just don't, it doesn't feel good. Yeah, so... Yeah, that's fine. But I'll work on that. This is all stuff to sort of... Yeah, sure. Into. Okay, is there one of the two bots that you particularly like me to take a look at, or...? Oh, I think they're both great examples of some pretty terrible gameplay, so I'm <laughs> sure we'll, um, yeah. That, what a description. Okay, well, we'll just go in the first one. All right. So, so... this one, uh, this one is a good one. I like it just, just because it's Aphilios, and I will be honest, I, I struggle against Aphilios because he, to me, doesn't make any sense. I don't mm -hmm. really understand how that champion works and i feel like oftentimes he just does some crazy crap and i die um is, is that and i'm sure i should learn him but, yeah exactly uh, i was about to ask is that just as a lack of experience of literally knowing what he does or not because if it's just about knowing yeah what like does, i just that... literally don't well I, i'm not exactly yeah, here to, to, to help you with that yeah. right like you got you got to just read his abilities in that regard so um, but I will help you about how to play against him specifically. Um, but I'm not just going to break down every ability for the sake of it, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, that's fine. I didn't expect you to. Yeah, yeah. that's okay. Uh, 
it's more about the generalized macro decision making that I want to focus on because that is definitely the bigger deal rather than a single matchup uh, decision. But okay, let me give you the how do I say this? The roadmap to developing consistency to climb in solo queue. And what I mean by that is, if you want to climb in League of Legends, you need to make as many variables in a game of solo queue consistent as possible. Okay, and one way to do that when going into a game of League of Legends is as soon as you're loading in, you want to look at your 2v2 bot lane and develop a matchup plan. It doesn't have to be hyper specific like, oh, I need to queue when he presses this ability and do this and that. You just want to establish what your laning win condition looks like and what the enemy bot lane win, uh, win condition looks like. I know this looks a bit janky because apparently you have two smite champions here. I don't know what the fuck I'm looking at. Is this is that a smite Amumu support? It is a smite Amumu support. That was a classic silver game right here. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. But let's say the matchup is just normal Amumu support and you have Ezreal Amumu versus Aphelios Zillion. I just want to test your baseline knowledge here and I want you to give me a breakdown of how you think this matchup should go. Yeah, so going into this, I felt like we had to be hyper aggressive level one. Um, I know Zillion, you know, he's got the bomb. It's somewhat okay at level one, but he's not super strong at level one, but he definitely mm -hmm. gets a lot stronger at two when he unlocks his son. Mm -hmm. So I went into this thinking we need to sort of establish lane presence. And at this point, I actually didn't know he had Smite, funny enough. Mm -hmm. It dawned on me later. Mm -hmm. Um but um but i and i but i also i knew it was Aphilios, and i'm not 100 percent exactly how his kit works but i don't believe he's very strong at level mm -hmm. one but i know he sort of does ramp into his abilities pretty quickly okay. so that's sort of how i went to this just to try and establish some you know, push him out of lane and then you know take it from there yeah okay that's fine but the way that i would make it easier for yourself to just have an overall laning matchup rather than having just a specific win condition level one is just thinking about what your champions do okay and if you want to even simplify it more just so that you have a general idea before you get more experience to learn the intricacies of every champion is what do does your support do so normally you'll be playing off your support in lane right so you want to look at what your support does and Mumu, yeah, yeah what does he do he just all ins all the fucking time right that's what he wants to do long range stuff. yeah exactly he, he just wants yeah. to be fucking spider-man in his ass in there permanently with his cues right and that is how yeah, we, we, right. we would just compartmentalize that as an all-in support and if you have an all-in support ezreal is quite flexible and he can play with multiple different supports so you'll fit in within that if your Amumu wants to support uh, all-in, then you're going to all-in with your Amumu and play really aggressive, long fights where you wait till, uh, till the Amumu lands his CC and then you play off that and try and one-shot them, you know what I mean? And now that you've recognized that so you want to play with all-in, you can um, you can mirror that on all all-in champions, whether you have a Nautilus, whether you have a uh, Leona, whether you have a Pike. It's the same for all of these. Yeah. And it's quite that simple. Because meaning, now meaning play up and, and be ready for them to, to Yeah, go just in. just just play off your yeah, them? exactly. Play off your supports CC and be ready to be aggressive and play on their engages, of course. Mm -hmm. And now if you know you know, if you have a Nautilus, Pike, Leona, Amumu, Thresh, I don't really need to break down every all in champion. You kind of know it and Alistar, blah blah blah. When they want to just go in and blow their load, Rel, for example. That is the style that you want to play. Okay, and the other two styles that you need to worry or think about are poke lanes. So whether you have a Karma, Lux, Ash support or whatever mage they're going to put out in silver, I don't know, maybe you'll find a fucking rare Zyra game. Then in that case, Brand, you, you, yeah, you don't want to play really up and aggressive all in. You want to be playing poke with your mana pool and just looking to chip them down over and over again off your abilities. Um, and that is a style shift. Okay, so there is all in. There is poke, and then there is um, one more, which is just basically scaling. Like if you have no real kill threat, uh, let's say you have a Yui or you have a Sona, you're not realistically looking to 2v2 or kill the lane unless you're super, super experienced yeah. in Ezreal, of course, um, because level 1, 2, you can bullshit any lane if you're hyper, hyper aggressive, of course. But in that case, you're kind of just sitting back and farming and waiting until you play off your item spikes, like Trinity Force or Maramu. Um, I, I find the Yumi support the hardest lane mm -hmm. to play in. It that, is. That, like, that is really tricky, yeah. yeah. Just because I get pushed in, and then I just feel like I have no options to... Sometimes I ban Yumi, so my support's not picky. I'm not lying. So I can completely understand. <laughs> but uh, yeah. in that case, you kind of just sit back and scale and pray you don't get dove. You know what I mean? That's the okay. sure you can do. Yeah. Um, but that is not the only thing you have to think about, okay? 
you think about your win condition, but you also need to think about the enemy bot lane's win condition, okay? And your job is to play within yours and avoid theirs. Okay, that is what you want to do. You want to play within your bot lane win condition and avoid the enemy bot lane's win condition. So in this case, they have a zillion yeah. of Elios, which is, quite honestly, pretty fucking useless. It doesn't do anything. Level one, just so you know, Ophelios doesn't even have an ability level one. He just swaps his guns, but it does nothing. You know what I mean? So he doesn't have an ability level one and Zillion throwing a bomb level one is useless. So your assessment of, yep. I want to play aggressive level one. We have an all in support. That's it. As soon as you've instantiated that in your mind in the draft, you want to be shaping every second of gameplay in the lane towards playing into your win condition and avoiding theirs. And that is how you have a consistent game plan. So you don't just oh yeah let me just e forward here why not like 99 percent of players they just play on autopilot they don't think about these things they're like yeah let me just fucking all in here when they have a poking support and they're like oh why did i lose lane you know so this is how you can make sure you have um stable gameplay every single game okay and i'm going to test you in the next spot that we look at on that it's just really really important that is the one of the most helpful things just thinking about that in the beginning for your consistency in laning okay yeah, and I, I did, I watched a re the review you did with somebody else about mm -hmm. coming to this bush and mm -hmm. uh, trying to go in aggressively. And um, it's funny when, you, you know, when you first did talk about this, I thought, no way I'm going to actually get my supports to follow me. But yeah. I've actually been having some pretty good luck I getting people told to you, bro, show up it's here. not luck. It's not yeah. luck. People always tell me, always say, oh, but they're not going to listen to me or they're going to flame me. Trust me, like you got to imagine, like if you really want to be the carry and the one climbing and developing consistency, you need to take agency. And you kind of need to treat all of your teammates like robots. And trust me, a lot of the time, as I told you, people play on autopilot. They don't know what they're doing. They're just walking around. And if you ping them with decisive decision making, they're going to listen. You know, they're actually going to listen. So it's good to see this. A movie looks like he's coming. Uh, what I don't like here yeah, is though. Yeah, he does. And this isn't always working out for me. I'll be honest. Sometimes this just turns into me feeding first blood, which mm -hmm. that's, which is terrible. But um, I'm still trying to figure this out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, what, but what I, I, I've been surprised. Yeah. What I wanted to say here is this is actually not what you're supposed to do here. You're supposed to ward this bush first. Because if you just face check this, they could actually be in here and just kill your ass. Okay, so you does actually... that happen a lot? I mean, I don't feel like I ever see people in these bushes. It like maybe shouldn't. Is that where I'm at? It, it, I mean, it won't happen a lot for you, and generally, a lot of people don't avoid this because they know that Israel is good at this, so they don't want to play into okay. you doing that. You know what I mean? But you don't want to risk just walking in there and getting one shot and then dying, and then your lane's over anyway. Like that's not a risk you want to take, right? So. You should be warning. Yeah. If you feel like being a flip motherfucker, you can just Giga Chad walk in dick first, like if you wanted to, but I wouldn't recommend it, okay? So definitely want to be warning this. Um, and this is very, very good to play into your win condition, right? Because you have an Amumu, you want to just be looking level one to all in and just one shot them, because that's what your champions do together. And they're bad level one, right? So I, I would like to see Amumu here with you and to look for an all in here, okay? The only thing you need to be worried about when playing aggressive level one like this is. If the enemy jungler has started bot side, they could just do three camps and gank you immediately. And a lot of junglers, they don't think. They mm -hmm. just see fighting on a lane. They're like, okay, me come. Even if it's bad for their jungle clear, you know? So if yeah. you want to play like this, yeah. you need to ward here early, okay? Um, if you're not already warding. But that this goes push. against what you just said. I know, I know. You, 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 can, you, can tell, you can tell your support to ward. You can tell your support to ward. And okay. they should. They should. Uh, just ping it here. But do you know the location? Um, I do, and I consistently forget it while I'm actually playing. But I, I do know where my it... mouse is right here on the menu. Up. I don't know if it's pretty small. Yeah, sort of like on the corner, so you get both. Yeah, the yeah. So you get you get the river tri here and yeah. and tri bush. Yeah. Okay. So just make sure. Um, tell your support to ward there. If you feel cheeky and you don't want to ward this bush, then you can hold it for yourself. Because sometimes your supports just don't ward for you. It is fucking annoying. You can hold your ward and um ward it yourself here, of course. My Mumu has smite. I wasn't really super. Ah, um... Yes. Yes. I forgot about yeah. that um i will say i am kind of going into like niche min maxing of how to play more aggressive so i'm not going to focus too much because i want to be in line with your goals here and that's more about wave states and things like that so i'm going to be focusing more on that mm. rather than specific laning interactions like stuff like this but i just thought i'd point that out for now but i'm going to be looking more no, about that's great. I... um one small thing here i'm just going to go over it quickly is you don't want to flip your Q when you have guaranteed CC on your support, okay? As well as all skill shots, it's much better to just wait for your Amumu to land his CC and then aim it, obviously. Mm. Uh, small, small thing to think yeah. about, but I see a lot of students doing this. They fire their abilities when they have a CC support and then their support hits the CC and then they're like, oh shit. So just, just be patient and wait for the CC, <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, I don't want to go into too much detail on that. But as you can see, you played into your win condition, they die. It's like you didn't, you didn't even hit a Q, you know what I mean? So this is how powerful 
thinking about your win conditions at the very beginning and then playing within those like oh they're a poke lane they should never be trading me like this if i am an all-in lane and you just go forward you know i mean so it's really good to see that this worked out it's good to see that amumu recognized it too and this came off the back of this bush cheese you know what i mean so it's it's nice to see all of the theory like working out perfectly here okay but what i will say is now we're going to talk about waves okay now that you've killed them number one what do you think you should do in this situation specifically I feel like I want to crash it as quickly as possible. Um, and my thought process is if I can get it under the tower quickly and reset it before he gets here, we'll have an XP advantage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, what I will say in this situation is it's actually very, very difficult to, especially early kills, crash a wave super, super quickly. Because I don't know if you know, but about two patches ago with the, or like three with the AD carry item changes, they made waves legit usain bolt they like zoom down the fucking lane on side lanes i don't know if you know about that mm -hmm. but they're very very quick now it, no. yeah they're very very quick now particularly in the early game it's the exact time where it is before 14 minutes side lanes are much much faster so you would not actually be able to crash this in time before the next wave comes and then your wave is going to be in a really awkward spot like kind of up here where you could get ganked but the reason it's not an issue in this game is because well it's a zillion you know like how they they have no cc to gank you with but just so you know, going forward, if you do happen to get a 2v2 early game and level 1, you're going to kind of have to see what the wave is looking like. But here, you know yourself, you're not going to be able to crash this like fast enough before the next wave comes in, right? Can you recognize that? Um... Because this is more about... Um, yeah, okay, okay, it's fine. <laughs> because that, that, that's more about, like, understanding your damage, which is just something I can't really just tell you like you're gonna have to experience that and figure mm. out your damage yourself but yeah, i just want I, I do know that at level one it's, it is very hard to like cs the whole wave down quickly yeah like, I, I get that yeah um yeah what is really cheeky here if you would like to do it is you could literally because the wave is neutral instantly recall buy a tier and come back and you won't miss anything or well you miss a tiny amount but it'll be the same that he's missed if you want to be really cheeky but that's only if you get specifically first blood because you get 400 gold but in this situation you can just play the lane normally you you just Keep last hitting here. So just don't... last hit and yeah, play yeah, it don't, out. yeah, don't full crash. Just, just as if Felias was still here, you know, and just like okay. slowly push, slowly push, stack up a wave. And what this will do is because he's not here to contest, you're going to stack up a very, very big wave that you can then crash and recall and not miss anything. The importance of That's one of the things I wanted to talk about because I've heard this this sort of like theory of slow crashing i think is what mm -hmm. they call it or, yes, or slow, like slow stacking. Up the slow, slow stacking i don't really understand how to actually execute that okay like... slow stacking the definition of slow stacking is just last hitting as late as you possibly can not touching the wave and only lasting as late as you possibly can so that you push as slow as you can okay and that is how you will slow stack a wave there's not really any complexity to it it's just you just keep waiting until they're one hp and then lasting so what this amumu did here was very very bad right because he wants to leave you if you wanted to slow like this you would just keep leaving it until it's literally one hp and then last here but because he kills it early these your minions can now switch to the other minions and kill them even faster you know what i mean yep so the way you want to slow stack is just last hit as slow as you possibly can and that's how you build up a big wave okay and there is lots of value that comes from stacking a wave would you like me to explain why that is or um I, I just so my understanding is if you're if you're if you're slow crashing you're going to build up more than one wave so mm -hmm. then when it does hit the tower it's giving you a longer recall window to yes buy, okay to wait to wait yeah so if you wanted to get into the real nitty gritty of league of legends okay this is me going into my like competitive teaching um and it's just nice to know because it seems you seem to be the kind of person that likes knowing all these theoretical details is the way that you should look at League of Legends is actually a turn-based game. And the turns are when you have crashed a wave. So when the enemy has crashed a wave, they have a turn to make a play on you. And when you have crashed a wave, you have a turn to play to make on them. And the bigger the wave you crash, the longer your turn is to make something happen. Okay, that is fundamentally how League of Legends works. This is what they will teach you if you ever get into esports. Um, that people don't really think about in depth for League of Legends. And the purpose of building up a big, big wave and then crashing it is your turn to make something happen is massive. You know, I mean, you have such a long period of time where you can make something happen that you don't need to be back on bot lane for, okay? And the objectives that you can make happen with a big wave is you can look for a dragon. 
that's one objective. You can look to put deep vision in the enemy's jungle. That's another objective. Right. You can look to poke them under the tower. That's another objective. You could look to get tower plates. That's another objective. Or one that is very, very underrated. You can look to recall to get an item lead. Um, and that is another objective. So that is the power of slow pushing a wave and crashing it. So here, if you kept stacking a wave um, after getting first blood, you could crash the big wave. You could recall before he's even killed your wave you're going to be back to lane with item an item lead on the enemy ad carry and you can play the lane when you have an item and he doesn't so do you see how powerful it is to like stack up a big wave mm -hmm. okay and it is very important yeah absolutely so what so in this scenario where i have a support who has uh like the relic item right that like mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. executes minions mm -hmm. and they've already sort of um destroy the equilibrium right mm -hmm. what what is the move here right do i so again continue with the yeah. slow push it, it is a difficult thing to uh, ascertain because it is such a game by game basis and of course that's what keeps league mm -hmm. fresh because every situation is different so sure. you need to push it differently but um that is not something i can specifically give you the details on because you yourself need to be able to recognize how much damage you have. Oh, it, do I have time to crash this before the next wave comes in? And that's what you need yeah. to recognize. So if you wanted me to give you okay. some information to take for yourself in situations like these, um, so that you can actually go forward and recognize it for yourself, it's still upon you, but if you wanted something to take away, it's one, am I able to crash this wave before the next wave comes and stops it? So like, can I kill this wave and escort it into the tower, fully into the tower before the next wave comes? Mm -hmm. If you can't, then you should keep slow pushing, okay? And second thing you need to worry about yeah. is, do you know where the jungler is? And are they going to gank you? Because if that's the case, and it's looking really bad, and it's going to slow push away from you while you're doing it, and you're low, for example, after taking a fight, you just have to recall. Otherwise, you're going to get ganked and die, right? And that's that's worse than just losing some minions. You know what I mean? So those are the two yep. scenarios you need to think about. But the most important thing is, can I crush it before they've gotten back? Or, the, or the, are the minions going to stop it? If you can't, and you slow push, okay? But okay. if you if you can actually, crush it, yeah. yeah, yeah. If you can crush it, then just immediately crush it and recall. That's only if you need to recall, of course. Um, so in this case, you can't crush this. Look, you see, next way you would not have ever had a chance to one shot this wave. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the next yeah. wave is already here. So you want to be slow pushing. So there you go. That's it's funny because I didn't think I would give you a general way to think about it, but there you go. There's a general way to think about it. You know. Um. So you can take that into your next games. So here. Uh. Yeah. So this is good. Actually. Every now and then you're just autopilot hitting the wave. But I know that's because you don't recognize what you should be doing here. So what you should be doing here is just keep last hitting. Just keep last hitting, build up as big a wave as you can. So that when you do crash it, you have enough time to recall and get back to lane before they do anything. So these auto attacks, this is bad, right? This is bad because you're fast pushing now. You're yeah, pushing. I think in my mind here, I was thinking I needed to push this under tower at this mm -hmm. point, right? So mm -hmm. I'm like actively doing the opposite of what, yeah, what, exactly. what the rent from the beginning Exactly. Is. Yeah. The thing is, you have crashed a wave now, but... As you can see, this wave is pretty small, right? So if you were to recall on this, he could kill this wave so quickly that he can probably kill the next one and crash that before you're even back in lane. So you might miss something. The whole thing that you want to think about when you are choosing to recall is, am I going to miss minions? And you don't want to recall in situations that you are, because that is the number one way that every AD carry misses CS. It's not just about fucking up last hits in lane, which people will do. I do it all the time. Um, the biggest way that people miss CS is they recall when the wave is like going to crash on them. And it's like, oh, you just missed six minions because you took a bad recall. You know what I mean? So every time you're thinking to yourself, can I recall here? You want to make the decision or evaluate in your mind. Am I going to miss minions if I recall now? And that's a pretty easy thing to yeah. do. You know what I mean? So just keep that in mind. When Maximizing you're thinking the amount of experience in gold you're getting. Yes, in absolutely. Like, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I like to give it in more general habitual terms so that you can take it away for yourself rather than me just being there to say, oh, you should recall in this situation. You know what I mean? I prefer teaching yeah. that kind of way, you know? Um, so here now, generally what you want to do once you've gotten a kill or some kind of gold lead in lane is you want to recall, right? So your entire focus now should be thinking about how can I play my wave in such a way that I recall to get my items without missing anything? That's what you want to be thinking right now. Okay. Um, what you can do is, do you, have you ever heard of the sexy base? I talk about this on stream, the sexy base for Ezreal. 
No. Okay. Not, no. The, the, the sexy record is 1,100 gold because that's when you can get Tier and Sheen, right? And it's just, oh, yeah. it is just, the, yep. the, I don't know any better record in the game on any champion than getting Tier Sheen on Ezreal. So if you wanted to, you could stay until 1,100 gold and then recall. Okay. Um. So that is also a fine option to do here. But I, I can see for you that it, there's like so many decisions to make up once. It's kind of hard to think about what you should be doing. Um. But generally, if you do have a gold lead in lane, you want to be looking at how you can get a chance to recall. Okay. So now this is quite dangerous because you've traded low, you have no pot, right? And now you're in an awkward situation where you want to recall, but you don't have that much control over the wave anymore because you're too low, right? So we're going to see how this plays out for you. And I'm going to look back and see how we could avoid this. So now, like, your wave's still in a dangerous position. And you're quite fortunate that you've just spotted Diana on the minimap. I bet you didn't even realize that, but you did. Um, and now you're like, okay, I'm safe. I'm not going to get ganked. But let's say you didn't have vision on the mini jungler. What's stopping you from getting ganked here, right? Like yeah, you could just... and I'm sitting on a ward. There's, exactly. like, no reason I haven't warded. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one, you should have warded, too. But let's say Diana does come. Even if she doesn't gank you and kill you, you're fucked now because they have full control over the wave and you're forced to recall. You're not allowed to stand here anymore. You know what I mean? And the way that you could have avoided all of this was by recognizing at this point that you really need to crash and recall and just one shot the wave. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, because well, remember, you want to get your tear, you want to get your items. Um, and so if you recognize that in your mind, that your main objective and focus is to recall here, then you're not going to start trading unnecessarily like this, you know, because now you start trading, which is fine. But how does this help you if you want to recall, right? Trading doesn't help you recall. You know what I mean? It helps you win the lane, but that's not what you're looking to do right now. So you trade here, you get low, and now you're stuck, right? Because they're going to have full control on the wave and you can't do anything about this. So as you can see, they're pushing in on you now. So you yep. don't, when you're getting pushed in on, Giga Chad, Mumu, let me see if you could have reacted to this a bit quicker. Yeah, maybe, but I'm not going to blame you for that. Like, he just fucking flash cues, right? Yeah, so, I didn't expect him to yeah, like, exactly, flash yeah. on this guy yeah. when I was so low. And, like, exactly, so yeah. like, this I, I won't blame you really for that. Me. Yeah. But this this could have been a kill if you did react faster, but again, there's, there's no him, And this actually puts me in, like, a worse position. I mm -hmm. actually thought about this later. I feel like I didn't even want to commit to this, and mm -hmm. I, I did. Um... Exactly. Okay, but this is what I mean here now, right? You need to recognize that waves are the most important thing when playing AD carry, okay? So every decision you make when playing bot lane, when you're taking a fight, when you're uh, looking to help your jungler on the dragon, when you're looking to move for a vision, should be based on your waves, okay? And if there is one thing that I want you to take away from this session that will help you the most with maintaining and upkeeping your CS, it is this, okay? The first step you want to take when you are either looking for a fight in the lane, when you are looking to help your jungler, blah, 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 whatever it is away from the lane is first evaluate your wave state. Right now, you see your movie go from the stage. By that, you mean, you, you mean, is it pushing or towards me or against me? Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm about that? to, yeah, I'm about to explain to you. Oh, okay. okay. So right now, you see your movie go for this play. Okay. And if we were to like put into um, practice this habit, right now, your first instinct should not be Yes, I go, I go, I go. Your first instinct should be, okay, let me look at the wave. This wave is pushing into you, okay? It's a big wave. You do not want to miss this. You absolutely do not want to miss this because if you miss this, it is fucked. Like, you're going to miss so much XP, so much gold. If you even risk dying, it is basically GG. That's game lost. You have no agency in the game now. You're too far behind, okay? And now that you've recognized this, that's when you go into step two. You've evaluated your wave. Your priority is catching this wave. You know that? That's the number one thing that you want to do. And now you see, look at this fight and you think to yourself, if I Ian here, am I going to fucking die? Like, is there a risk of me dying? Is there a risk of me missing this wave? Am I going to get too low? Yes. Yes, there is. Okay. And you are not thinking about that. Of course, again, I'm not blaming you, but this is just a clear mistake that you're making is you don't even think about your wave. You're just going for committing to this fight. You don't know if jungler is going to gank you. You don't know how this is going to end out. And now you're really, really, really low. And this wave is still pushing away from you. You've died. And now this is this is the biggest way that players miss CS. By not respecting their waves, right? 
So if there's one thing that will literally just change your gameplay overnight, it is shifting your mentality to thinking more about waves than it is about how can I kill them or, you know, anything fancy like that. Okay. And um, you just need to realize that missing this wave is not worth the risk of potentially getting a kill here, you know, unless it's really, really free, you know, let, let's say they flash in your fucking face, then you don't need to think about anything, you know, you know, they're just inting and you should obviously capitalize on that. But the bigger thing here is you're not even thinking about the wave. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think my, the problem I have here um, is I, I don't want to just, I didn't want to just leave a Moo Moo to just get two yes. and one. Okay. I maybe I should have. Yeah, okay, and that's say. really, really, really important. And I'm glad you brought that up. And I tell this to every fucking student ever um, because they also have uh, issues with this is you, especially as an AD carry, you need to see yourself in a game of League of Legends as the main character, okay? And if someone is making a decision for you that you know is bad for your game, you should not follow it. Even if you feel bad for them, even if you think they're going to flame you, even if you think whatever the fuck, whatever you might be thinking. And that's more of a psychological thing because I don't know what it is, but even in high low, people get mind control to help their teammates, even though it's going to fuck them over in the game. You know what I mean? And if you want to develop consistency, which is the most important thing for climbing, as I said back in the beginning of the session, the way that you develop consistency mm -hmm. is you make every decision in the game that is going to make sure that you can be the one to carry. You know what I mean? If you just let your teammates control your game, then the game's not in your hands. You get what I mean? It's not You're not the one carrying. It's them making decisions for you. So if you know the game is going to be worse out for you, if something goes wrong just because your teammate calls you, then you need to be that confident in your decision making. Um, and be like, no, this is going to grief my game. If you want to engage, you engage. I'm going to focus on the wave. And if you need to mute their pings afterwards or their comms, that's what you need to do. But... You know, it's better than you follow up on your teammate just to babysit their mental and then your game's over. You can't do anything anymore. You're too far behind. Like this, if I saw this, yep. is already like, it's already, if they manage to crash the wave here, this is already, the game is now out of your hands because you're so far behind. You know what I mean? Um, so if they do crash the wave here, which they might. Okay, fortunately, it took them so long that you can catch the wave. But let's say in another world, they ca crash this whole wave and you miss this. Look, you did miss a cannon and some other thing, uh, like a couple of more melee minions. Now, because you're babysitting your Amumu's, like, making sure he doesn't get tilted and he's not fighting on his own, there is less of an opportunity for you to have an impact on the game. And that is the whole thing we want to achieve when uh, coaching or climbing in solo queue is you want to be able to have the biggest impact on the outcome of a game, right? You don't want to rely on yeah. your teammates for that. And this is the number one thing that a lot of players make the mistake on is they'll see their team fighting in the river. The wave will be really bad for them, right? Your wave will be slow pushing out, for example. So that means your wave is going to kill all of their minions, right? Because that's how slow push works. Um, and then they'll join that fight anyway. And then let's say the fight goes wrong. Not only did you die, but you missed a whole wave too. And because you listen to your teammates, you are no longer allowed to have an impact on the game. So I can see already that th this is something... I can tell from your intentions on this that this is probably an issue for you in your games. Is You kind of just follow anything that happens on the map, okay? And again, yeah, it definitely, it definitely is. Yeah, this happens to Dragon Pit a lot too, where people are like, "Oh, we're going to fight over Scarlet exactly, Dragon." Exactly. It's like, I, and I leave a wave, and it's like, okay, I just missed. Exactly, you know. exactly. And now, and, 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 yeah, at the yeah. whim of your teammates, you have lost agency in the game, and we don't want that. We don't want that. We always yeah. want to have the game in your hands to be able to be controlled. You know, um, and again, this yeah. all ties back to that number one thing that I want you to take away from the session is, and you're not always going to get this right. Of course, your decision making isn't always going to be right. If it was, then you'd be challenger. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. But the important thing is the way that you learn and hone your decision making and know what is right and wrong is by step one, whenever something happens, I need to look at my wave. Okay. And then after that, okay, no, if I move here, I'm going to miss all of these minions. And you say, I'm not going to move. I'm going to miss this wave. Then that is you being confident in your game plan. It may or may not be wrong, but at least you are honing your decision making and you're keeping the agency within your control. And that is super, super important because I can tell you already without watching, I don't need to watch 10 games. I can just watch this game. And I know already the way that you are missing CS is by 99% of the time, things like this, where you move away from bad waves or you take bad recalls because you go into fights that you shouldn't have because you're not thinking about the wave. You're just thinking, you're just like, oh, fight, me see fight, me go. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and this is literally night and day how you can improve your CS. Like this is the biggest portion, okay. not just, oh, I... I missed some like three minions in lane because I didn't know how much 
damage I had on my auto attack, you know what I mean? Um, so already, like this game, like you can see, you have 17 CS in 5 minutes. You, it should not be like that. It should be like 30, 40, for example. And if we take a look at why, it is because... Um, first of all, it was going pretty well. Um, obviously, you did actually miss a lot of minions just, you know, through awkward right clicks. But that's not something for me to teach you. That's just something for you to learn through playing a lot, obviously. But, um, okay, let me show you the exact two points, right? One, right here. You follow up on a, on a random engage trading when you know you want to recall. Because you have uh, items to buy, of course. Okay. And this, because you followed your teammate, your teammate on this, even though you didn't want to fight, now you don't have control over the wave. Okay, so that's number one. That's one mistake that you made. And then number two is, following up from number one, mm -hmm. they are now pushing the wave on you, so you're in an awkward situation where your only focus here, if this is me, is like, okay, this is a big wave. I don't want to miss this. I don't want to fight. I don't want to move. I don't want to recall. Even if they fucking flash under my tower, I'm not going to hit. Okay, that's an exaggeration, but uh, it's like this... What all of my eyes are on, because as I said, waves are the most important thing. And then again, you go into autopilot and you see your Amumu going for something that you're not 100% sure will work out or not. Already at this point, when you haven't reacted with a W, it's like, okay, you know, you can't kill him anymore, you know, already. And you don't want to miss this wave. You yeah. know what I mean? And then this is where you switch your mindset to wave is most important. Keep farming. I keep farming. Yeah, yeah, my yeah. priority is catching this wave. Okay. And I'm going to see if you do this once more, because now your CS is really low. And see, we've recognized the exact points where you have missed CS. You know what I mean? Um, and it's a mind shift that you need to have to always think about ways first and then the plays. Okay? So here, you are slow pushing. So you, you, you clearly know how to slow push. You just didn't know the definition of what you were doing. So this is, you're doing it right here. It's a slow pushing. Okay? And I like this. I like this. More often than not, you should be slow pushing more than fast crashing. Okay? So just keep that in mind. It's actually okay. good to know too. Yeah. Because, yeah, as I was saying, most players just autopilot. They're like, oh, what do I do here? Like, I don't know. Do I just hit the wave? Do I not? If more often than not, you want to slow push a wave than fast crashing. It just has infinite more uses than fast crashing. If you want to know when you should fast crash, it is only when you know absolutely that the wave that you are fast crashing, that they, they are going to miss. So, for example, you see the enemy bot lane on mid wave for some reason. You're like, oh, shit, he's, he's going to miss this wave if I crash it. That's when you can fast crash, right? Or okay. you've just killed them. And you know you can crash in time, like we saw in the very first blood that you got. It's like, oh, can I crash in time here? Is he going to miss a wave? Yes. Okay, I fast crash. Other than that, literally, other than that, it's very simple. Just slow push. <laughs> literally just slow push. Uh, and you'll be uh, you'll be being chilling. One other wave control technique is freezing. Do you know about freezing? Yep. Oh, so you do oh, know you about have, like, I think it's I think it's like, it's like four... Um... Yeah ranged minions like yeah. keep it equilibrium generally yeah. four minions okay uh and you, you just hold them here and you don't touch the wave and then it's the exact same concept as slow pushing is you just keep lossing but just make sure four minions are alive and then the wave will stay exactly yeah i understand the concept although i will say the execution of like actually keeping it frozen is really tricky i mean obviously mm -hmm. they want to break the freeze and mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot that goes into that but yeah um i would say there are two situations that you want to recognize to freeze so i've already told you when you should fast crash that is if you know 100 they're gonna miss the wave i've told you when you should slow push mm -hmm. which is any other situation outside of when they're gonna miss the wave you should be slow pushing and now let me tell you the criteria for when you want to freeze okay the two situations that you want to freeze are one if the matchup is really really hard for you to play and you don't want to be up in their face like let's say we go back here okay so for example let's say just look at the weather position of the wave is don't worry about the champions let's say they have nautilus callista on enemy team you yeah. really don't want to be standing here, right? Like, this is dangerous. Like, they could just flash auto you with Nautilus and just kill you because you're so far up in the lane, right? So this is a bad position to be in. So let's say that was the matchup and you had a really bad matchup. The way that you could just completely ignore that is for as long as you possibly can, you freeze the wave in front of your tower because you're really safe. You're so close to your tower, right? They, Nautilus can't hook you. A Callista can't kill you. So that's situation number one. When the matchup is super bad for you and you want to be safe at your tower, that's when you can try and freeze. Obviously, they're going to eventually break it, but you should still try. You know what I mean? And then two, yep. another situation that you can freeze is the complete opposite. If you are super, super strong and you have a melee support, you want to freeze in front of your tower because it forces them to walk up. 
right? So the same thing that it would have been for the Callista or the Nautilus where you're standing in front of their tower, that's what you want to do. Because if you're so much stronger than them and you have a Nautilus, you freeze here, they have to walk up and then you look to kill them, right? So there you go. Those are the two situations that you want to freeze. So I've literally given you 99% of decision making for wave management, okay? <laughs> when, you, when you want to, yeah. when you want to fast crash, it's basically when uh, they miss a minion. I'm just going to say it one more time, full breakdown of all of them really, really quickly. The situations or criteria you want to look for when you want to fast crash is if they are going to miss the wave or if you want to recall ASAP and crash the wave, right? Number two, slow pushing every other situation outside of that when you don't want to fast crash or you know they're already in the lane you slow push because you want to build up a big wave to give yourself time to make a play uh, for objectives like a dragon like recalling like warning what okay and then number three is freezing when the late matchup is very very difficult for you and you want to be safe you want to try and freeze and tower or if you have a melee engaged support and you're much stronger than them and you want to look for a fight and set up a gank maybe even for your jungler that is also in your trees. So there you go. Literally, that is the breakdown of every single scenario of any wave state you could ever see. And it will always fall into one of those categories. The only thing that might make it difficult is being able to recognize when you should do which one. Even though I've just told you, it's still quite difficult in the heat of the game. You sure. still need to figure yeah. out. And there's a lot going on in this game sometimes. Like I, Yeah, exactly, I... exactly. But the point yeah. is, now that you know, you can sort of think back to these and practice making the decision to do one of these in those criteria. And the more you do it, the more it will develop in the back of your mind. And especially when playing AD carry, especially when you're new to AD carry, this is the number one thing that you should be focusing on is, is minion waves, as I told you, okay? Um, so I think I've, I've, this is the one laid out plan that I want you to have going into your games forward for improving in this regard is one, Remember that waves are the most important thing for an AD carry, okay? That's just step one, okay? Actually, that's like the preliminary step. That's before everything. So the real step one is, any time a play is occurring, I want you to, in your mind, if, it, if you can use a random word that'll help you start this process, remember, the first thing you should do is evaluate your wave state, okay? If your jungler goes for a gank, or if there is... Uh, a dragon skirmish happening or if your support is looking for engaged blah, blah 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 first step one evaluate your wave state step two recognize are you going to miss minions committing to that play and if you are don't fucking do it <laughs> you know what i mean don't don't join it don't miss the waves the more you learn about like the thresholds of this the more you can sort of break down that mold and learn okay even if I miss some minions here, I can move to this fight. But when you're in the beginning stages of learning this, you should stick quite strictly to that. And I promise you, even if you just played like a robot and was like, way bad, me not move. And just play like that, you know, like that yeah, is yeah, enough to yeah. get you to like, even up to master. People play like that. People play like robots for waves. Reckless, for example. So you know, can, can I ask a question about that? Because like, I, I, I understand what you're saying, like, Mm -hmm. philosophically but yep. when like there is a mid game right mm -hmm. like so at some mm -hmm. point that all starts to break down yeah okay so um I, have you ever had coaching before um once once yeah okay. on Vigar. yeah oh Vigar v2 That's oh right. oh yeah. okay yeah oh, he, well yeah he's a fucking amazing coach um so what you got recognized is generally a lot of the time when coaching specifically for solo queue uh, coaching into the mid game is quite difficult, especially in lower elos, because the game becomes a complete shit fest. You know what I mean? And the yeah, thing that you yep. should do when coaching is develop consistency, right? And obviously in the mid game, if it becomes a shit fest all the time, it's quite hard to narrate consistent gameplay and what you should be doing because you're playing more re reactionarily, like based on what your team does. But this concept of prioritizing waves does not change, does not change throughout any point in the game. And this is how AD carries, I don't know if you've ever played against a, a very good AD carry that like out of nowhere, you just see they have an insane lead, like CS lead on you and they're like super high level and you're like, what yep. the fuck happened? And it's, it's literally, the worst. yeah, it's yeah, literally no, it just because terrible. like they're like two items up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you weren't just piss into them in the beginning of the game, the reason that happens <laughs> is because they are just farming waves, focusing on waves. Even if their team dies in a fight, they're just sitting on side lane, farming a wave. And then out of nowhere, they just come back with like four items, two levels up, and you're like, how did that happen? It was just because they're farming waves. And I want to show yeah. you that even in the mid game, remember what I told you about League of Legends fundamentally being a turn-based game? 
in the mid game that doesn't change okay something that's specific to Israel is uh, I'm skipping past the learning phase here because I've gone over the, like what I think is most important tailored specifically to you to focus You've given on me some some things to focus yeah a, on a lot of shit right a lot of shit but if you wanted to know about the mid game and this is specific to Israel is once either your tower has been taken or the enemy tower has been taken you then become the mid laner you are now just the mid laner don't i i can't really go into specifics for why because that goes into like super intricate niche macro but just know that you fulfill the role of a mid laner once the tower is gone because you have so much poke on mid waves that you can start one shotting their waves before they've even touched them right because you have so much range and if you have prior yeah. on mid wave in the mid game this is again a competitive concept so it's not too applicable to you then you have so many macro options for what you can do in the game right as i told you the turns are defined by if you crash a wave or if they crash a wave so if you can always crash midway before them which is what israel is very good at you always have a turn to make something happen right so that's why it's so strong you and go. you can lean one way or the other exactly right? from exactly mid, from from mid lane yeah, anything yeah, if you wanted to play it into a dragon objective you could go there if you wanted to go to uh top side for herald or nash you could go there um and that is basically the play repeated play pattern that you want to do as Ezreal in the mid game. Again, it's quite simple. You take over mid. If you are ahead to be able to take prio, sometimes you're behind, so you can only farm the waves, right? But if you're ahead, you one shot the wave before they can even touch it because you have so much range. And then you have so much time to shift with your jungler and support. If you want to take vision, if you want to invade a buff, if you want to gank a side lane, mm. and you just keep doing that over and over again. You crash the wave, you now have a turn to play, you make your turn and you return back to mid lane to get another turn to play, right? By crashing the wave. And it's such a simple breakdown of League of Legends that players don't even fucking recognize. They're just like, fuck it, I'm going to fight on this mid wave or like, I'm going to contest this for no fucking reason. Oh, my mid wave is, cra is like met neutral. I'm going to go fucking invade their red buff, even though I haven't crashed my wave. I promise you, if you simplify the game down to just waves, Especially as an AD carry, this is very different for other roles. Obviously, if you're jungler, it doesn't matter. If you're playing a support, it doesn't matter as much for you. Uh, and tanky top laners as well, it doesn't matter. This is specifically for AD carry. Your game should be played around waves and not anything else, like the other way around. If your team starts fighting yeah. and, and you're not crashing in mid wave, that fight goes wrong and you've missed your mid wave and you die, you don't have control anymore. You're just, you just put yourself behind for no reason, okay? So. That rule that's a was really interesting about. way of looking at it as like the hey, like take the wave and then you have the ability yeah. to move rather than like there are things. I, I've literally never thought about it like that. Almost yeah. like, like, like you said, turn based. That's exactly, a... exactly. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and yeah, that, like that, 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 that is any carry in a nutshell. And it guarantees that even if you ha don't, haven't joined these fights and you don't have many kills, at least you will have 10 CS per minute. Because if you are playing within that framework, you are always catching the wave first, right? You know what I mean? You're always catching a wave. So you should never be missing a wave under this room. Again, I think for you primarily, and this is me just from my millions of fucking hours of experience and just through intuition and reading and seeing the way that you play, I think this is for sure the best way that you should develop improvement is being kind of strict to that plan. And the more that you are strict to it and develop it in the back of your mind, the more you will actually learn when you have opportunities to break that mold and be like, Okay, I might miss some CS here, but I I already know because I've done it so many times that it's actually better for me to move to this fight here because I can get these kills. I'm not going to miss that much, for example. Um, that is not something that I can teach you. You have to learn through playing and experience. Not everything can just be told, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. So yeah, I think that's the exact game plan. Uh, I did tell you about the mid game. You had two more points mc coin matchup touch another play and poke sustain all in oh yeah i actually went yeah, I, I have like one example i wanted to just quickly run through if, and i think i put it in the in the list as well but like i, I the second game highlighted this we don't have to go through it i know we're running kind of no, that's here, right but, it's fine don't worry. um the 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 mid to late game assassins like i've had a few games where um it's sort, sort of do well in lane come out of it maybe mm -hmm. there's a like in this game i think there's a fed talent Mm -hmm. And uh, then I just pr just proceed to feed uh, you know a thousand five hundred gold to talent right? mm -hmm. like yeah, over yeah. and over yeah. again he just comes in and and just demolishes my face in. and um like my only strategy for this right now is like oh I just have to like hide in the bushes until I see someone engage and then I'm able to sort of go in um but that doesn't facilitate some of these like like what you were just talking about like oh farm the mid the mid lane mm -hmm. or whatever I just I, just, I, I sort of feel like I've I've removed um. 
agency for farming from the game when there's a roaming assassin it just mm -hmm. becomes very difficult to, yeah. to sort of translate the lead i have and 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 you are correct in saying that you are correct in saying that um that is just the fundamental like there has to be a trade-off for being god damage carry as an anti carry and there's that is that you can get killed very easily obviously um and there isn't necessarily a specific thing i can tell you that's like because it's going to be a different assassin every game it's like it's going to be rengar who ults from fucking fog or um it's going to be an evelyn that's just roaming around pray to the fucking heavens you don't play against evelyn because that permanent <laughs> that champion uh, that, if you play against evelyn if you go oh and 20 i don't even blame you i would too you know what i mean um but it is again about shifting the focus of your like attention onto that champion okay if they have you need to in the mid game once you've got in your lead let's say you've killed the bot lane tower blah, blah blah and you're not so focused on laning anymore your next priority about what's in the forefront of your mind at all times is where is this motherfucker like i know they want to kill me if where i'm standing is right now in like their zone of threat and they can kill me then i don't want to be doing that you know what i mean or if you want if you have to move to a certain place you at least need to be escorted or ping that you need your jungler with you you need to support with you but the number one thing that you should take away from that is at all times just like you can even do this like right about at 40 minutes or whenever your landing phase ends i want you to do this i want you to go to yourself and just think okay landing phase is over now what can kill me in this game what are the biggest threats okay it's a rengar ulti okay it's a flash malphite ulting flank okay it's uh a, a zed coming in the bush just establish those as soon as you've recognized that landing phase is over and then be hyper vigilant about that and then literally every time you're like farming a mid wave or rotating to a fight oh could there be a zed or a talon in this bush oh could there be a rengar just waiting to leap out of this shit and one shot me and if you haven't seen them you have to be strict about it even if it feels really uncomfortable yeah. your team stuck so let's say let me put this into exact um and an exact image of what it would look like in a real game from what i've told you to do let's say you're in the mid game now and you're taking over mid lane like uh, like i told you to do right and your team starts a fight but you haven't cleared mid wave so your priority is what are you gonna do in that situation mid yeah you're gonna kill the mid wave yeah, and now mid yeah and now you've cleared the mid wave and you want to rotate the to the fight but you haven't seen the zed you haven't seen the pdf talon that wants to one shoot you in that yeah. situation it feels really uncomfortable okay that you can't rotate to your team but if there is any risk that you are just going to give a shutdown you gotta remember these assassins they are always looking at you they don't give a fuck if there's a fight happening down there they could just let the team fight sit in a bush one shot you when you try and rotate so it is within your best interest to be hyper vigilant if you think there's not a chance that you can rotate without getting one shot then you don't do it and you just wait until you see this champion on vision yeah. and you know it's safe if you really really want to rotate and you have the time to then you could you know for example go really safe route where you know realistically they're never ever going to be there you know what i mean and that's a better way to do it but if there's any risk that you're just going to get one shot and give away 100 six thousand gold like then then don't do it because the more fed they get yeah they... and i think i think I sort of intuitively thought that was the answer, but I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't being crazy. But I, it does feel really bad to just be like, yeah, yeah can't it does. even go over there because there's no vision. Yeah, yeah. It, it does. But you know what feels worse? Doing it anyway and then dying. Okay, <laughs> yeah. yep. so you do it anyway and then you die, you give them 1k gold. And the thing is, the more fed that they get, the harder it is, the less options you have, you know? Like, because then they could just bullshit I mean, one tree. I think that's actually what happens in this game. Like, I fed him, like, shut down, and then I was just like, well, now it's it's just going to snowball into yeah. an even worse problem. And, and right? you need to like, stay really vigilant yeah. in those cases because you could be 10 and 0, but you, it, it doesn't matter. You're still squishy. You're still squishy. And if even when you're 10 and 0, you give one shutdown to the enemy assassin, it feels really uncomfortable that, like, oh, I made one mistake and now I lose the game, but fundamentally their role counters yours. So you should never be giving them a chance to shut you down. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. I, um, and ironically, I had Mundo do this recently as well. He farmed really well, and then I just like I couldn't escape this guy. He just like clear <laughs> yeah. me and then like just run you me down. And I was like, oh, I yeah, can do literally nothing. Yeah. Anyway, okay. I, that 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 is that 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 um makes me feel better. That like my intuition on how to play that mm -hmm. was the correct way. But yeah, still eighty eighty C level. I, I do yeah. want to do one more thing before we end the session. I don't know why I got so much irritation on my nose. On this fucking video i'm going to upload to youtube but i'm guaranteeing you the comments are going to why the fuck are you itching your nose so much but um <laughs> uh yeah one more one more thing i want to go over because uh obviously i've gone over time a little bit but it's, it's not a big deal uh i wanted to test you on this from the first game okay we're looking at your 2v2 matchup i want you to give me mm -hmm. now your 
breakdown of how this is going to go? Yeah, so for me, this I actually like Nami. Like, she's a weird um, en enchanter support, I guess, but she pokes pretty well and can mm -hmm. be very aggressive, right? So I, I like laning with Nami because she's she's not she's sort of like an all in, but not exactly. But she's got a lot of synergy. That being said, um, Milio and, and Varus are uh, pretty annoying to play against mm -hmm. right, with the with the push. So my thought process here is, you know, they're going to want to poke us out pretty aggressively, and then mm -hmm. um, we're we're going to want to be close, but it's hard to actually do that with Milio mm -hmm. in the game. So um, I don't uh, know if I actually answered if, your if, question. If, uh, if I how the lane is going to go, but yeah, no, no worries. If I were to tell you to give me a generalized label, like um you are a poke lane or you are an all-in lane and they are a whatever the fuck lane uh how would you we're describe yours in this? okay you're a poke, a poke lane and lane. and what are they yeah. i think they're also a poke lane um okay yeah with champions like this it can be a bit confusing but the way i would describe them is they want to play long fights so they're more trading you know they're more trading they want to play long fights because with milio's w and lethal tempo you can play really aggressive, you know what I mean? Milio is actually quite good into Ezreal sure. with long range AD carries. And they want you to be fighting them for a long time so they can make use out of the lethal tempo permanently being stacked, out of the consistent healing from the W, out of the constant burn passives. So this is more of a matchup specific thing, obviously, but again, you can still recognize it as they want to play long fights and you want to be poking, okay? So as I said in the beginning of the last game, you always want to play into your win condition and outside of theirs. Right? So, and fortunately enough, poke count as long fights, right? Because you can hit them outside of their, their range, right? So you never want to be undisciplined and start just trading auto for auto. You know what I mean? Don't do that because it's mm. outside of your one condition yeah. and into theirs, right? And it's really, really simple. And again, I know that you didn't recognize it in this game, but the more that you do your best to think about it every single game, it doesn't take much. And what else are you going to be thinking about in loading screen? Like, let me change my fucking Spotify playlist or something. You don't want to do that, right? Um, just quickly think about this. Oh, what does my lane want to do? What does the lane want to do? And the more you do it, the more you're going to get better at it, the more accurate you're going to be with how the matchup should play. Um, and obviously, you do need to play a decent amount. Obviously, it's about experience rather yeah. than just theorizing what it's going to be. You have to feel it. Sometimes you're going to lose the matchup. Like, oh, why did I lose that? It's because of this reason. And then it'll start honing. And that's the whole point of playing more and practicing, right? right. So, um, But yeah, that's how yep. you can look at it. I hope you have a lot to take away from this session. I mean, you definitely do. <laughs> you definitely have a lot to take away from the session. I, because of that, want to give you a specific focus to take away because there was a lot to take away. And that would be about the framework of play of focusing on waves before anything else. I think that would be the thing that slingshots your gameplay to the next level, like more than anything else. And the quicker that you develop that as a subconscious, because that's the way that you get better at League is you take one improvement point, you focus on that and then until it's like, literally second nature and then you could put your focus on something yep. else right um i think getting this into your subconscious first is going to be like a perfect framework for you to build upon to the more niche oh this is how i want to trade in lane and this is how my champion interacts with theirs kind of concepts you know what i mean so um okay. that's the one thing i'd focus on uh but yeah that was a right, cool session. well i really appreciate it this was super helpful yeah no worries man i'm, I'm glad i you know i didn't this is just me checking you now